Today we're going to be doing the hydrolysis of salts lab, which you can find on page 159. As we talked about in class, an acid plus a base gives you salt plus water. The H and the OH cancel out make the water, and the leftover stuff makes the salt. Well, what you can do is you can take the salt, put it back in the water, and recreate the acid and the base. Now to figure out the solutions acidic, basic, or neutral, I taught you the following steps yesterday. You take the salt and you split it apart into ions. Now, NaCl is not going to split apart into NaCl. It's going to split apart into Na plus and Cl minus. The Na plus is going to get the negative hydroxide ion to make NaOH. That's going to be a strong base. Group 1 metals make strong bases. Group 2 metals make strong bases. That's group 1 metal. The Cl negative is going to get H positive. HCl. Now, on our chart, HCl has got a Ka that says very large. It's a strong acid. A strong acid and a strong base together will make a very neutral solution. So our stuff is going to be neutral. Now, if we take a look at another chemical, sodium sulfite, Na2SO3. This little 2 is not part of a polyatomic ion, so this little 2 is not going to affect this at all. But this little 3 is part of the polyatomic ion. The polyatomic ion is SO3 minus 2. The Na is really going to split apart into two ions, both of which are Na+. Well, of course, the NH pluses are going to take the hydroxides, OH minus, and OH minus. Oops. And even though there's two OH minuses, it's OH minus, so it is a strong base. SO3 minus 2 is actually going to take two H pluses. There's the first, and there's the second. And I'm going to lay them right on top of each other. And that formula is now going to be H2. Let's get the two over there. H2SO3. Now, H2SO3, you look up on your chart, and the Ka is small. That is a weak acid. And we all know that a strong base and weak acid is going to make a basic solution. So our solution is going to be basic. Now, on the next page of your lab, you've got this chart. It's actually like this. Well, let's deal with this part first. And what you're going to see is here's the salts. These first two columns, these columns here, we're going to kind of ignore those for a little while. That's actually the testing part. What we're going to focus on is parent acid and parent base and the strength of the acid in the prediction. So what you're going to do in parent acid is you're going to take CrCl3, split it apart into its two ions, recreate the acid, put it here, write strong or weak. Then you'll do the same thing for the parent base, strong or weak. Then you'll compare these two guys here and determine if the solution should be acidic, basic, or neutral. Once you've done all of this, then you're going to actually test. When you test, you're going to write the pH number right here from the pH paper, and then you're going to write down whether it's acidic, basic, or neutral. This column here should match that column there. And one last thing I wanted to mention, see right at the bottom, if you come up with the acid H2CO3, it's not really on the Ka chart, but it kind of is. It's listed as CO2 plus H2O. That's H2CO3. So because we can't do this lab for real, what I want to do is show you a little bit of a demonstration, and then we're going to do kind of like a cartoon version of the lab. This is someone actually taking a bunch of different salts, and they are um, mixing them with a universal indicator, and then we're going to see how the pH changes when they add the salts. It's from Flynn Scientific. The demonstration that I'm going to perform today is called hydrolysis of salts. And I use this in an acid-base unit. And what I have lined up here on the light box are seven beakers, each filled with some distilled water to which universal indicator has been added. 
Now I will mention that not everybody's distilled water comes out to be right at this green pH of seven. So if necessary, you might have to tweak the pH by either adding a little bit of acid or base to get it to the color that you want. The important thing is that we want to start out with a neutral pH of green. Now, what I'm going to do is add seven different salts. And by salt here, I'm talking in the generic term. I'm talking about ionic solids where the cation is not a hydrogen ion and the anion is not a hydroxide ion. We're going to start by just looking at the reactions and then we'll go back and talk about what's happening to give us the results. So my first one that I'm going to add here is aluminum chloride. And I'm just going to add solid right into the beaker and stir that up. My second one. Now the red color that actually indicates that it's acidic. Is potassium carbonate. That bluish purple color for universal indicator means basic. The third one is ammonium chloride. Now we can see that this one is still acidic, but it's not quite as acidic as the aluminum chloride. The fourth one is sodium bicarbonate. Now this one is basic, but it's not quite as basic as the K2CO3. So I'm just showing these just to prove to you guys that yes, when you add an ionic substance, a salt to water, it can change the pH. Now we're gonna start our actual experiment. So here we're gonna do the hydrolysis of salts experiment in kind of a cartoon fashion, but it's gonna give us the actual results that you would see if we were actually doing this in lab. So this is a modified version of the lab from your lab book. Let me go through and explain what we're doing. First, I'm gonna be adding distilled water to a whole bunch of different wells here. And I've got the wells labeled as to which salts I'm gonna use. That's Na2CO3, that's SRCl2. That's kind of covered up a little bit, but you'll see those in your lab results. And we're gonna be using some of these wells, but not all of them. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of distilled water to each one. Let's kind of squirt some in there. And then that one, and that one. And we're going to use the water to dissolve our salts. Now we'll do that well. And for some reason, we're doing the wells that we're not using, but oh well. Get it? Oh well, we're filling the wells. Uh, it's hilarious. Okay. So then, I'm going to add a little bit of chromium chloride to the first well. Now, the chromium chloride turns a reddish color, not because it has anything to do with pH, but chromium chloride has a transition element in it, and transition elements make colored solutions. So the fact that this is red means nothing. we got to test it with pH paper. If we add some potassium bromide into the second well, you can see it doesn't really create a color. Sodium sulfide, and this one we're going to add sodium carbonate. And this one, that's strontium chloride. And this one is potassium acetate. This big old thing right here is just acetate. It's one polyatomic ion. So we pour the salt in and we stir it up. And then in this well here, we're going to add iron nitrate. But since iron is a, is a transition element, that also makes the solution colored. This color has nothing to do with this chart. The pH paper is related to this chart. And then we're going to add some of our unknowns, our sodium bromate, that's what that's called. And the last one is called ammonium oxalate. I'm going to add some of that in there. There we go. And now we've stirred all these up, and now we're going to take a piece of pH paper, and we're going to dip it in here and wait for the pH paper to change color. As it changes color, you're going to take the best guess as to what pH it is, and you're going to write that down. Now. Before we do this, you have already gone through and written out the parent acid and the parent base. You have already made your prediction as to whether these will be acidic, basic, or neutral. If you haven't, stop and do this now. The idea is you practice and see if you can make the prediction 
for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven salts, not the unknowns, but do these first seven right here. And then let's see if your acidic, basic, or neutral predictions actually match. So if you haven't done this, stop the video now and make your predictions. Go through and, and calculate. Don't just guess. Calculate strong acid, strong base, neutral. Strong acid, weak base, acidic. Okay? Just like we showed you in the beginning of the video. Fill out that chart. Okay, so let's test with pH paper. Put it in there. Turns that color. Take this color and as best you can figure out where it fits along here and write down that pH. And then write down on your chart whether that's an acidic, basic, or neutral salt. So here's the potassium bromide. Again, best guess as to what color that is. Here's the sodium sulfide. Here's the sodium carbonate. Nice thing is you can pause this video anytime you want to look at these colors. Strontium chloride, get in there. There we go, strontium chloride. Potassium acetate. Iron nitrate. And again, that's the color you want to, you want to use for the pH chart, not this yellow color here. So you should be able to check your predictions and they should have matched your actual pH prediction, your actual pH values from this experiment. Now we're doing the two unknowns, sodium bromate. You're going to split that apart into a parent acid and a parent base. The parent base, you should know if it's strong or weak. But let's find out about the acid. So when I put a little bit of sodium bromate in here, that's what I get. So from that, you should be able to predict whether bromic acid, which is hydrogens and BRO3, HBRO3, whether that is a strong or a weak acid. And the second one, as it says in the, the write-up, this and this are both made from a weak acid and a weak base. But how weak are they? Well, if I put this in solution and test it with pH paper, that's my color. That should tell you who's stronger and who's weaker. Is the base stronger or is the acid stronger? Is the parent base stronger or is the parent acid stronger? So again, make sure you've got these pHs listed on your chart and you've listed whether or not this color means acidic or basic or neutral. And just as a reminder about the unknowns, if we're looking at the Ka and the Kb, the higher the Ka it is, the more acidic. The higher the Kb, the more basic. Which means if you've got something that's got a low Ka, but an even lower Kb, even though they're both considered weak, if this number is higher than this number, it's going to be acidic. If the Kb number is higher than the Ka number, then it's going to be basic because the base is stronger. Okay, fairly simple lab. Most of your points come from your predictions, and then you can check to see if your predictions are right. Then there's a little bit more of the unknown. Please ask me questions if you guys get confused. I'm online constantly, and I've been getting all of your emails, and I respond to them as quickly as possible. Good luck.